This is Newfoundland's Beta Nord Wilderness Reserve. At 2,895 square kilometers, it is one of the last untamed areas on the island and far from civilization. Just had a small situation in. The next two months, we're alone to do what we love, explore rarely seen country. We'll penetrate the reserve deep to its heart, but it won't be easy. I'm Justin Barber, and this is Sackett. Come follow us through the woods. There's Kemp. I was just sitting under the tarp, heard a rattle on the rocks, and Saku barked. Sure enough, a caribou darted down. He's just having a feed. Look at him over there. Moseying around, taking his time. I don't blame him. It's a beautiful day. And that right there is the woodland caribou, if I haven't mentioned it already. And they're a part of Newfoundland's Middle Ridge caribou herd. They're the biggest herd on the island. All day long the caribou kept coming around camping, getting a drink, having a bite to eat. They'd make their loop when they'd come back, and we took it all in. That's what's great about a trip like this. It's another fine day here in Newfoundland. We're at the height of the land. That's what we reached getting to Mount Sylvester. It's a different landscape. Still forested at times, but very much wide open and barren, rugged. But it's a thing of beauty. We have to get to one more pond, which is the headwaters. It's behind us, it's a short portage. So we're back on the Portage Trail. This one's 99% Tuckamore, which is stunted, gnarled spruce, which is characteristic of this area. It's tangly, but thankfully, there's a lot of game trails. The caribou primarily, and also the moose come through here. The trails weave left and right. 
but they get us to where we need to go. So we're thankful for that. I've already made the first trip ahead. So this is the small, small stream that comes down from the pond we're headed up to. And it's kind of deep for about a hundred yards. And then it pretty much evaporates to nothing. So that's why I'm taking the portage here. Sack, come around too. Two trips done, had a boy sack. Your work's over. I gotta go back and get the canoe now. So the first portage is down, but there's still more fun to go today. That's all right. Keeps things interesting. The sun is hot. It's summer. In the woods in the summer, sometimes the sweats are bad. In this region particularly, it's hard to find shade. So you got your canoe, which I had pried up with the paddle. There we go. You can use your canoe for shade. You could also use a tarp, but it's much quicker to just tip this on its side and take a little break. And of course, it's also good for a downpour of rain as well. Works as a shelter that way. Sack is there sat in the pond. Oh, he's coming up now. That was a big paddle, half a kilometer. Battling in the Tuckamore here. Sack had hooked up pretty bad. Look at that. The wood went right between the clip on his collar. Come on, buddy. That's what we're into. More of this is going to wear us down, especially in this heat. Pushing 30 degrees now. Yeah, it's not all pretty here on the Portage Trail, but the payoff is a nice break. Some fresh blueberries starting to come out. Oh, I just dropped two. Soon enough, there'll be thousands of them. Go on, Jack, have a few by. Second Portage just about down. Now we're getting into a string of lakes. I think it's about five or six lakes in a row, but they're not very big. No bigger than a kilometer long, if that. To this point, we've roamed about 75 kilometers by foot and canoe. Heading northeast of Sylvester, we move into deeper country and a different watershed. There are small lakes and portages I know nothing about. The feeling of exploration and lonely freedom tingles our spines. We feel healthy and strong, hungry to take on any challenge.
cool. A cup of tea is going to be good now. Several cups. Well, it's another morning here in the Promised Land. What a pretty spot we got here. Tucked away on the side of the brook. It was nice to settle here yesterday evening in the shade. Saku's looking good over there, nice and sharp. He spent every break just about yesterday lying in the pond like he would. It was hot. I was tracking my water consumption as we were going along and in eight hours, I had 10 liters of water in me to fight the sweats. For supper, I also had a pile of sodium there in my pasta to replace the electrolytes. So I got no cramps this morning. So upcoming, it breaks down like this. We'll be skipping ponds again. Six more to be exact. The numbers are six kilometers as the crow flies to get there. That's eight kilometers on our winding route. We have to finish this portage, which we're on right now, and then I anticipate seven more along the way, unless there's a downpour from the heavens and fills up the brooks because they're really dry. Can't see that happening. So those portages will add eight more kilometers, which gives us 16 in total to reach our objective. So what do you think, Zach? Let's knock this off so we can get the eastern meal peg and set up a home base. Alright Zach, looks like Mr. Beaver stops us here. The string of ponds we are following is broken up by short portages with no clear trail. But on this carry I find evidence of tree cuts from many years ago and now, though it may seem hard to believe, we're on an old ragged trail thinking of the experiences that were had here before us. We pick our way through the path of least resistance.
think it's time to throw these socks out, Sacco. Cool. They've seen better days. Nope. I'll wear them to the ground. I just walked down on the beach, Saki was down here. He was just sitting down, motionless. Him and a small caribou having to stare down. And he didn't chase after him. Saku, that a boy. He could have took off then, that could have been hairy. I don't know what it is. He has a certain respect for him. And actually now there's two of them over there. Maybe it's just where he's settling into the trip. He's seen a lot of them now. He's used to them, I don't know. But that's good, Sack. That's the right behavior we need out here. They'll give you a swift kick in the head. Oh yeah, here we go. Gonna have to drag everything around this now. So nothing's ever handed to you out here. This morning, I thought I'd be within easy reach of our destination lake, but I got moving. And basically, we were following a string of lakes there. It's an old trail. I was on it at times. Times I wasn't, I can see the cuts. And it continues on down a river north of us to the Atlantic Ocean. We're not going that way. We were headed in an opposite direction. And I got onto the brook and I started working up it and there's thick woods on the side of this. It's rocky. It's a snarl. There's no trail. This has been seldom traveled. So I had to cut a trail to get up the first 150 yards. And we're going to have to continue working our way up it. This is going to slow us down big time. So this is the string of lakes we were working along. Now I'm into this brook that runs down from up here. So it's about a kilometer. Then we have this pond, another pond, and then we got our goal. So here's the other half. We got that pond. Next one. And then we're into Eastern Meal Peg. This is greasy. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel and you've stuck around the adventure for this long, you may as well now. Thanks. Much appreciated. Also, if you don't like me wearing no teeth, too bad. <laughs> You're gonna miss out if you leave. I had to take to the brook and I hopped rocks. That was more efficient than cutting the trail and beating the woods. A little unbalanced and stuff, but it was easier going. The water levels are down big time. We got about a quarter of a kilometer left. It is just after six. I think we're gonna call it here. It's been a pig of a day. Now we're sat back in the tent. Fire is just crackling away out there on the rock. Glad I didn't push on any further today. I was hitting a wall, I was stumbling. Saku took a few falls too, coming up with his pack on up the brook. So it can get dangerous when you get tired. And I recognize those signs because nobody out here cares. Nothing out here cares if I fall down and do myself in. So I said, that's enough. We could have chipped away another hour, but there was no need.
Now we're kicked back and we'll get there tomorrow. We got to stay patient, hey sack. Another morning, another caribou swings by camp. Since the beginning of the expedition, we've climbed about 15 kilometers of river in between many lakes. Now we have just one tiny section of brook left to reach our goal. Here it is, Eastern Meal Peg. It's raw, hardly anyone ever comes in here. It is big, like a maze, with an unbelievable amount of islands, coves, inlets, and peninsulas. Now we're excited to explore and enjoy it. First off, I'm gonna take my time and find a nice campsite. I got a few places in mind. We'll stick it out there for at least a week and we'll be making some side trips from there. This morning I already seen four caribou, three geese, three adders, a beaver. This place is flourishing with life. So we just got rocked with a few hard rain showers as I was looking around for our camp. So I said, what odds? And I pull in here to a random island, fair size. No tent up, I just got a little fire going. Tarp overhead. I don't know if we'll just hold it out here. For today, the wind's starting to brew too. And then we'll get on our way and look for a camp tomorrow. This is a nice little spot though. I'd be content staying here for an evening. Haven't been here 20 minutes. Heard a splash, a bit of a commotion. Went out there on the beach and swimming across the little cove was a caribou. Always a treat to see. And they're always so close by. It's amazing. So after the long journey in, we went through some pretty rough and scrubby old bush. I'm just checking Saku's paws out now. They all look good. No other cuts or anything elsewhere. He had a flanker from the fire shoot out and burn him in the face. I don't know if you can see that. Close to your eyes, Sack. You're tougher than nails, buddy. Reaching Easter Meal Peg lands us right in the heart of the reserve, as far from civilization as we can get. We're a 60 kilometer straight shot from the nearest community, and this lake is unlike any other I've ever been on in my life. Strange and mysterious, 
it seems to almost beg our attention, as if wanting us to further explore its lonely shores and waters. It's a lake that'll make you wonder. This morning we're out with the empty canoe, so to keep a bit of weight up front, I threw five or six rocks in there. That'll give us better tracking out on the lake. What a morning. Such a tangle getting around. Everything looks the same. Just flat. It seems like a million islands. Wouldn't be hard to get lost on this one. It's hard to imagine how this lake was carved out thousands and thousands of years ago. What a process. Fish on. Doesn't seem too big. One an ish. Let him go on, Zach. Well, that's the first fish here on Eastern Meal Peg. Let's hope it picks up. Fish aren't biting this morning. Almost three hours. And I got one small Wananish. It's so flat calm out here now, you can see the wake of the canoe a good ways back. That's how smooth it is, but it's some sort of immense silence, deafening, out here today, other than Saku's panting. I can hear my ears drumming. It's that quiet. Endless exploring in here. So much to see and do. It's like I don't have enough time. It's the end of our fourth week and the wildness of the Beta Nord Reserve continues to impress. I've chosen to keep the first camp we landed at here on Easter Mealpeg. We've rested after the long trip in and are ready for new adventures. Now we're off to a different section of this maze-like lake in search of trout, which are becoming more elusive by the day.
Well, today I paddle about 10 kilometers away from camp, but after about an hour and a half, nothing. But I'm certainly going to fish for a bit longer, and then we'll see what else we can get ourselves into. Oh, I've had enough of that fishing. Been at it for a couple hours, not even a bite. Oh, I packed it in. What kind of fun is that? I got spoiled early in the trip, catching them left, right, and center. So I think we're going to move on. Maybe I'll try this one on the way home, Saku. See what we can get. This one here is supposed to be a sinking one that dives down to the depths you know some of the trout that are cooling off in the in the cold deeper waters and that could be something that's happening up here as well this lake is in the headwaters it's it's the ultimate end of the system and it's very rocky barren it's desolate country so I don't know if that has something to do with the nutrients in the water and the fish not biting. I've seen a few breach and there's a few around, but they're not taken. It's not like back earlier in the trip, you know, on one evening on Kegadek Lake, they were rising left, right, and center, and I didn't see that. Yesterday evening, I paddled the lake here several kilometers. It was like glass, and I hardly seen a fish move. It was strange. Just came for a hike here up on a high hill, scored a few blueberries, got a caribou roaming down beneath, looks like a young one. What a view up here, nice view of the southern end, the eastern meal peg. Zach, you want blueberries in your bannock? You can also see the tulp to our southeast. Go on, Zach. Let's go. Let's 
So we're back to camp after a long day out rambling around. The kettle's on. Looks some good. Sacks there sprawled out. I believe we covered about 20 kilometers today paddling around the lake, winding through all the islands and bays. On my way up this morning, I made sure to look for certain things like a tall tree, a big rock, or a funny looking island. Things that stood out to me so when I came back this afternoon, I'd remember my way. I just have the map down in front of me and I'm constantly glancing down at it and then looking around at my surroundings and orienting myself that way. Along the way, we got some blueberries. So right now, I'm gonna whip up a nice treat, a blueberry bannock. So in our bowl, I got about a cup and a half of flour. And I add in just a pinch of salt, about a teaspoon, I suppose. I eye all this out. Put a little more baking powder, roughly a tablespoon, if you can eye it out good enough. That'll do. Little pinch. Now we got brown sugar. If the blueberries weren't sweet enough for you, or me and Saki weren't, add a little bit of that. Extra calories too. Then I'm going to add just a bit of olive oil. This is not necessary, but it makes it taste a little better. Just a bit, about a tablespoon. Extra calories again. Finally, it's the blueberries. I won't need all of these. Sack will get some with a supper. I made chocolate chip bannock last night. Oh, lost a couple blueberries. That's all right. Put them in. That won't hurt. Add some water. The key is not to add too much water at first. Just a little bit. Work it around and gradually add more. If you add too much, you can't take it out. You'll have to add more flour, then you're using up your flour. You want a firm dough. I start with the spoon, and then eventually I'll work my hands in there. So there you have it, ready for the fry pan. So now, I'll add a nice bit of oil there. We're going to heat it up. Now it's nothing but to put the bannock on it, nice and flat. Fits like a glove. I push it right to the edges. Back on the fire. Now we're all interested in when it's going to be ready, especially cooking on a campfire. It's hard to say. You just keep an eye on it. Things are cooked when they're cooked. I'll usually let that simmer there for a few minutes. Then I add this. So seven or eight minutes on one side, and then when I flip it over, I remove the pot and I just cook it open, faced. Wait a sec. You'll get a piece too. So that should be good for that side. Oh yes, look at that. Nice and crisp. Little burn there, that's all right, that won't hurt you. Back on it goes. For another little while. Of course, generally it always helps when you're cooking on a campfire to have the fire nice and low and just be cooking on hot coals. Otherwise, you're burning everything up if you got a roaring blaze. Sometimes when I flip it, I add another little drop of oil because it's good for you. I even put some of it on Saku's dog food every now and then. That's golden goodness. And there you have it. We'll lay that to the side. Let it cool. 
and we'll get a cup of tea on the go. So that's it. The wait is over. I could hardly stick around for you. Here's the bannock. I'm gonna dip it in my tea. Mmm. It's like a blueberry pancake. Pancake night in the woods, sack. It's a great end to a wonderful day in the outdoors. Hey sack. Here. Not bad, what? Getting the batteries all looked after. Looks like a space station. <laughs> Anyways, that's how it is. So, we got another good day in the books. It was a long one, but a dandy. We'll catch you in the morning. And we're gonna head south to explore some new country. I'm leaving most of my gear here. We tipped over. Looking at winds up to 90 kilometers an hour, 30 millimeters of rain. We still have a long ways to get out of here, back to civilization. <laughs> 